Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Chalk Talk series. My name is Kevin Floyd, a technical marketing engineer with the Security Business Unit here at Cisco Systems. Well, today has been a real exciting year when it comes to security, with all the break-ins, ransomware, and also uh, spoofing attacks, text-based attacks, etc. So today we're going to talk about a new features in for email security, and that is going to be the build we're at is async OS 10.0. For email security, that includes cloud and on-prem appliances, hardware, and virtual machines. So the, the feature in async OS 10.0 is forged email detection. Email detection. So forged email detection is a, a new feature that detects text-based attacks. And that would be uh, business email compromises that come in from the outside, outside of a company, into a company, where they, they spoof uh, an executive, for example, or and it may include uh, the domain of the, of the company itself. The attack comes in and uh, whoever receives it could be an internal executive or another employee. They, there's a call to action for them to do something, give this spoofer money or whatever, and um, they react and later on find out that, that it was totally incorrect. Okay, so we are going to use a model, model company. It's a fictitious company. It is Alco, right over here. This is the Alco accounting team. Now, this team, as I said, is fictitious. All the names have been changed. What they, rep what they will be representing is a, an event that did actually happen in 2016 where the, the tax records were stolen from a company. And, and prior to the uh, April 15th filing, which meant that the perpetrator could take those and go ahead and file those tax returns on his behalf. So all those, all those employees were exposed in this case. So let's move on and talk about this stuff, the great, great stuff that we're going to get to in a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to begin with uh, Alice's mailbox. Okay, so Alice, again, is the employee right here inside on this accounting team. Uh, let's look at her mailbox starting right here. Okay, and as, as you can see, there are two records that are in here in the mailbox. One of them is Alco Benefits, and the other one is a message from John Blacksmith. Now, John Blacksmith is the CEO of Alco. Okay, so we're going to look at these two messages and, and take them apart and show the details that we can find inside them. Okay, so starting with, let's see, let's take the, take the first message, take it apart, and as you can see right here, the, um, this benefits message is, uh, is asking Alice to uh, take the option of, in, of increasing your benefit contributions uh, to uh, certain things and giving her the um, you know, time period to go ahead and, and take the action. Okay. It's typical benefits uh, notice that we all get working in, in Silicon Valley. Okay. So let's, let's look at this message, the characteristics. You notice that from in the from value of the message, you can see the two things uh, following the from. One is you can see that the name is, uh, it's, a bit of, it, it's a statement that's coming from Alco Benefits. And the other is the, the email ID string, okay? So let's look at these and compare them with what we can see down inside the internet headers. So we look at the internet headers down here, and it talks about the, the actual mail sender. The actual mail sender is, is Send For You. Now Send For You is a, a, a bulk mailing company that sends on behalf of typical large organizations. In other words, they handle the incoming messages that need to go to employees that represent um, uh, benefits, updates, uh, 401k notices, health benefits, etc. Okay, so 
Sin4U has permission to send into uh, Alco, okay? They have permission to spoof the, their Alco domain, alco.com. Now, Cisco's email security appliance has the capability today to go ahead and allow uh, external senders to send into an organization, the organization's domain name, or into their domain, that's okay, and filter out everything else. In other words, if you're not, uh, you, you don't have the legal uh, ability to send in, we can block you. So it's, it's a kind of like a whitelist that we can create. Now, so that's perfectly innocent. We don't need to worry about that kind of spoof. So it's, a, it's sort of a, a friendly spoof, if you will, okay? So let's dig a little bit deeper. We go back into Alice's mailbox, okay? Let's see what else is there. So the other message is from it's from the CEO, okay, John Blacksmith. And let's look at the details uh, of that message. Now you can see right over here, uh, John's name, John Blacksmith's name is listed. And if Alice is looking at the listing in her mailbox, she says, oh, John Blacksmith, uh, a tax, uh, tax audit on Alco. I'm an accountant, so I have to react to this right away. And it's marked urgent. So. I just open this message up and I see right here that it's an emergency, it's, you know, it's priority one and it's from John Blacksmith. I jump down to the content without reading the, the from value over in the email header. And so it's from uh, jblacksmith at freemail.com, okay? So, I, I didn't see that. So you might say, how does it get inside the company in the first place? Well, it's a perfectly legitimate email. And this uh, free mail organization could register uh, their server with um, DKIM and SPF. So there is no really legitimate block against this. It's a legitimate text-based message. And now it's asking Alice to upload the contents, any, any tax records that she has on all employees, and, and get it into John, John Blacksmith's uh, Dropbox, okay? Now, this is sent out not just to Alice, but the entire accounting team. So probability is the guy will get lucky and somebody will upload all that stuff. And the guy goes, goes away like, like a robber, okay? So what can we pull on? What lever can we check? There's no uh, malware inside here. There is no um, malicious links, URLs to, to track on. So what do we do? The only thing is to look at the executive name. The executive name is being abused. So what we need to do is track on that and react to it. So back to forged email detection. Let's see what we have in our pocket to take care of that. Right here we have a content filter. Okay, and the content filter is in, is imploring, employing forged email detection. And the technique is called FED. It's a new feature available in our content filter uh, conditions and action. So the, the FED condition that is listed here, what does it do? Well, you create an executive dictionary and the executive dictionary will um, have a listing of all the executives, their names and also their email IDs that you, that you can create. And if it sees an incoming message that is coming into the organization and it checks the from value, it gets a match, then it goes ahead and reacts to that message depending on what you want to do, okay? So what we've chosen to do, do here is apply the Fed action. What does the Fed action do? The Fed action is going to take the from value and remove it, take it out of there from, from there and replace it with the, the mail from value. And the mail from value is more, more believable. Uh, that, that's part of the internet header that we were talking about earlier. So the thing we have to understand and keep in our minds is that the from value is strictly for the recipient and is not used for message routing. The mail from value is a legitimate routing address that it, it associates this message back to the original server. So that's the message that we have to provide to the recipient if it's a malicious message. And we have to provide that to, to Alice in this case. So we, we change the from value. And what else we do? We also uh, take the original from, because the, the original from, as you remember, it said 
John Blacksmith, which was the executive of the company, along with the, the external free mail address, um, the deception was in the name. We need to take that and we put it, copy it up into the X headers of the modified message. And that can be used by the admin later on. So when Alice, say if there's a mistake that's done here, and Alice comes to the admin and says, hey, you know, what happened to my message? You know, why? And, and the admin pulls it out and says, well, look at this, this uh, uh, X original from value right here in your header. You know, that's why we tracked it, okay? Very good stuff. Now, the last thing that we do is change the subject, okay? We have to prepin the subject with possible spoof, okay? And that we have that action in this content filter as well. You can do other things too. You could send it off to a quarantine and uh, notify the, uh, the recipient that, that is malicious. Um, you could do different things depending on if it's going to an executive or it's going to just a, a regular uh, individual contributor in the company. Okay, all right. Now, remember I said that the entire accounting team was attacked, so I know we're just talking about Alice. You know, who else should we be talking about here? You know, what other names? Well, what we can do is we can go on and, and talk about the the um, talk about the reports. Now, the reports the reports are right over here. You can see in in the reports we can see a uh, history of the attack that happened on uh, from April seventh through eighth, right before taxes. And we see that John Blacksmith's name, his name has been abused um, four times, okay? There's four messages that come in. And over on the right, uh, under uh, the number of messages, there's a second column to the right over here, you can see that um, he was, um, th this message came in to four times. If you click on that, that value for four, it's a, it's a hyperlink. It'll take you over to message tracking. And message tracking will tell you where, who are the recipients of every single one of these messages. And probably it's, it's a broad distribution because uh, the, the perpetrator is trying to play the odds here and get as many people as he can. So you can go after and contact those people, okay? All right, so that's all the great stuff we have on forged email detection. We look forward to seeing you again and thank you for attending this edition of the Chalk Talk series.